Hi YouTube, it's Kathy and I'm here to do the quarter year crisis book tag. This is a new book tag as of 2020 and I will pop the original down below. I don't think I've been tagged by anybody, although if you have done this tag and you tagged me, thank you for that. Did I say this tag was original to 2020 earlier? I don't know, I think my brain might have done that. It's original to this year, it's brand new. I know that the title of this tag was probably just because quarter year and crisis sound really good together, but also I kind of feel like I'm in a little bit of crisis. I kind of feel overwhelmed. I haven't done a readathon in a while, which really bums me out. So of course it makes sense that I'm sitting here in my very cozy robe for the comfort of it, but also my so many books, so many times book shirt. Uh, yeah, that's a thing that's happening. This tag has about 10 prompts and it's all about the first quarter of 2022 and how your reading is doing. Let's just get into the prompts, shall we? How many books have you read so far? This year so far, up until the end of the first quarter, I have read 47 books, which seems fairly low considering I tend to read more than 200 a year. However, this does tend to be a lower reading time for me because of seasonal affective disorder and less energy, so we're gonna chalk it up to that and see how things are going when we get to halfway through the year and see if that number is bumped up significantly. Have you already found a book that might be a 2022 favorite? Firstly, favorites are hard. I don't have absolute favorites. I have things that I've picked as absolute favorites for when people ask and that type of thing, but really I don't have absolute favorites and it kind of stresses me out that people want one answer to things like this. That being said, that means I'm going to tell you the favorite books that I read each month of this quarter. In the first month, January, my favorite book was Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. This is a Christmas book that takes place in Edinburgh and it has to do with very messy family situations and Edinburgh is my favorite city in the world, so I was predisposed to enjoy this. In February my book was Razorblade Tears and I need this book to be made into an action flick ASAP. And in March, my favorite book was The Girls in the Garden, which is a really good twisty mystery thriller and I just really needed to know who did it. I suppose as kind of an alternative to that question, in case you haven't read anything very good so far, the next question is, if not, what was your favorite book you read that wasn't quite five stars? I've read nine five stars so far this year, so I think I'm good on that one. I'm a simple creature and relatively easy to please, and especially if books seem like they're kind of geared towards me, I'm going to enjoy them even more, and then my star ratings happen based on enjoyment more than anything else. Sometimes there will be technical things that I'll take stars away for, but it's really just like how much did I enjoy this? Any one star reads or a least favorite book of the year? So my least favorite books I've read in each of these three months have been 3.5 star reads, so I haven't found anything I absolutely hated. I did have one two star DNF, and two stars is just kind of where I always put my DNFs. I don't put them as a one because I didn't finish it and I don't feel like I should put it as a one because that seems overly cruel. However, it did cause me to stop reading it because I wasn't enjoying it, so I kind of put it at two stars. That book was to my friend who did not save my life, and this was translated from French and there were just so many characters you didn't really understand the time frame or at least I didn't anyway and it was just kind of really run on sentences. There would be entire chapters that were only two or three sentences long and it just became a chore to read and to try to understand and I stopped reading it most read genre so far. So I have a couple of handy dandy graphs for you because I do have a spreadsheet that has all of this information on it, so it's just easy to copy those. Surprisingly, as though I'm coming for a book Olive's title of nonfiction queen, my top genre so far this year has been nonfiction, followed by contemporary, historical fiction, even parts of mystery, thriller, and fantasy, and then six other genres. If you're the type of person that likes to see the same chart but by page count instead of by amount of books read, this is what it looks like. A book that surprised you. Death Prefers Blondes is a YA book about people who do heists in drag, which I thought that sounded fantastic, so obviously I needed to read it, but I was surprised by the very global scope of this story. Not only do characters go to different places around the world, but things are happening because of different things that are happening around the world, and I did not expect that from what I just assumed was going to be a fun heist romp. 
I was also surprised that I had never heard of the subject of missing from the village, uh, just because I feel like if there's a serial killer in Canada, I should probably know about them, especially if they were operating and were caught in my lifetime. I kind of feel like I should have known about this. However, Canada is the second largest country in the world, and this happened all the way in Ontario, and I have never lived in Ontario, so I feel slightly better, but I'm still surprised. And then the conclusion of Devil House by John Darnell really surprised me because it really focused in on the types of stories that people choose to tell, and that was something that just kind of really hit home for me. A book that's come out in 2022 already that you want to read but haven't yet. I have a couple of answers for this one just because why not have a couple of answers for things. The first one is a book that's actually out this week and I have an arc of and I just haven't gotten to it yet. It's the next on my list but I just haven't yet. It's called She Gets the Girl and it's a YA sapphic story written by two women who are wives. Like they are each other's wives so that's adorable and that just makes me want to read it. I don't even know what the synopsis of it is. I just know it's why a sapphic and two wives who are married to each other wrote it so I want to read it. The other one that I don't have a copy yet of and the library doesn't have a copy yet of which is really frustrating is One for All which is a gender bent retelling of the Three Musketeers that has disability rep and especially because this is the disability readathon month I would like to read it this month. Will I? It depends on if I can get it from a bookstore or if the library finally comes through for me. Either way I will eventually read this. One goal that you're succeeding at. Prior to filming this video I actually went to my goals video because I never know what my goals are. I'm always like, here are my goals! And then a few months later, I have no idea what my goals were. That's always a fun thing I do. So if you want to see me reacting to my 2021 goals and then making my 2022 goals, that video will be linked down below. However, the one goal that I am absolutely smashing is I wanted to continue making my weekly wrap-up series because as far as I know, I am the person on booktube that has been making weekly wrap-ups the longest and I've never missed a week. I've now been doing it for just over five and a quarter years. I had to laugh really hard though because my first goal was to be less overwhelmed and I'm, I'm still just as overwhelmed. I talked about maybe reading less books this year and so far reading less books or at least I feel like I've read less books because I, I should have read at least 50 if I'm going to get 200 for the year. Uh, I'm not any less overwhelmed. I feel more overwhelmed because I haven't read enough. One goal that you need to focus on. I did talk about in that video how I have e-arcs that I want to get to as well as physical books. I'm doing fairly well at the e-arcs. There are a couple for my 2022 list that I haven't gotten to yet, but I am keeping track of them at least, which is really, really helpful in actually getting to them. But I really do need to focus on reading some of the books I have in my possession because there are a lot of them unread and I would love to see myself get a lot of them off my TBR. New to you booktuber, bookstagrammer, or book talker for 2022 you recommend. Now the person I decided to recommend is not new to me for 2022. However, they literally just opened their shop for book annotation stickers and I feel like I would love to just give her that extra push. So I'm going to talk about her here. This is also the part of the video that is going to be vaguely confusing for my best friend because the person I'm talking about is named Taryn and my best friend is named Taryn and that's not a very common name. So she's gonna be confused for a second. <laughs> so I've been following Taryn on Instagram for ages now. Her Instagram is girlinred underscore and she just launched her shop which is girlinred.com and like I said she makes bookish annotation stickers and they look so cute. I'm not a big book annotator myself but I know that there are tons of people that really like annotating their books and really like to put a lot of work into doing that or even they book journal while they're doing it and having these types of stickers would probably be beneficial. So I I figured I would tell you about this. I will link their Instagram and their shop down below so you can check that out and let her know that I sent you. And there you have it. This of course is probably the place where I meant to tag people, however I never know who to tag, who's done it, who hasn't, so if you want to do this tag, you are tagged. I'm sure you can also do this on different platforms, so if you wanted to do it on booktube or booktalk or anything like that, you go for it. Alternatively, let me know down in the comments below what your answers to these questions are. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I made a coffee account, which is linked down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!